life is one large whorehouse and a restaurant. And if you don't believe me, you are a mental. Because the killing fields stretch far beyond the hidden government-sanctioned abattoirs. Everywhere you turn, there is a meal and a fuck waiting to be served. I eat, I fuck, therefore I am. But some have an inert belief in economical living and would prefer to combine the two. The following seven vignettes focus on these economics. Bon appetit, motherfucker. lovebirds out in the shit end of nowhere. All John Price ever wanted was this simple life. So I guess moving out in the middle of nowhere to a shithole like Aberdeen, New South Wales, gave him the opportunity to indulge in that lifestyle. And with only two places to work at, an abattoir or a mine, you had your pick of careers. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. And I'm guessing that limited scope in the employment options can also be transferred over to the ladies. Because Catherine Knight, she weren't no looker. You got my vote on that. Twice if you need it. And apparently, one with such limited looks might be strong on personality. But by all accounts, that weren't the case either. She'd been in a string of relationships, and all of them violent. Even cutting a puppy's throat in front of her ex, saying if he ever screwed around, he'd be next. Now, gentlemen, that is a warning sign. But abuse after abuse, Johnny Boy ignored those signs. I guess he figured that true love would eventually prevail. So when kangaroo cops were called over to his place by friends when he didn't show up for work, the prognosis weren't good. When these friends insisted cops do a welfare check and they went inside, it looked like a retard had been given haircuts with a chainsaw. And as the two moved slowly through the dark house, one of them reached up to push aside what he believed to be a shower curtain on the door frame, but it turned out to be a corpse hanging on a meat hook. It was missing its head and had large pieces cut out of its body, looking like a goddamn religious icon. With the smell of something cooking in the kitchen, they moved cautiously towards the room. And sure enough, there was a pot on the stove that had almost simmered dry when they looked inside. Two guesses to what was on the menu. Floating around with some peas, carrots, some diced potatoes, and hopefully a pinch of paprika was John Price's head. And it was almost looking edible. In fact, it was. Because he was served up on a plate, along with five prime steaks cut out of his ass. His Australian ass. And she lovingly set the table with cards beside each of the plates with his kids' names on it. Yeah, they were a feast, all right. That's if you like to eat a dude's grisly ass. But I guess his kids weren't hungry because they didn't show up. And Catherine Knight dined alone. Then she took a fistful of sleeping pills and went back into the room. And that's where cops found her in a coma. And unfortunately, the ugly bitch survived. And the cops knew what had happened. They were well aware of the abuse that was going on. And Knight's reputation preceded her. She'd worked at the local abattoir, and a business were killing. And business was good. Maybe too good, because she'd been given countless warnings about administering too much pain and suffering. And she'd broken every rule in the abattoir. And when her bosses pulled her in to reprimand her, she told them that she figured that undo pain and suffering that was the buzz, one of the benefits of the job, and she wasn't going to change for no one. And when cops got her back to the cop shop and started interviewing her, she didn't deny a thing. She said that she'd been abused by Price and she'd finally snapped and cut his throat and stabbed him 37 times just to make sure. And her exact words to him were, every dog has its day. She even admitted eating her boyfriend's ass, but she couldn't finish it because it was too grisly, so she fed it to the dog. 
But even her own lawyer wasn't buying her story. But her fate was sealed when a neighbor testified that Price had come to him the night before and said that if my truck is still in the driveway in the morning, phone the cops, because it means she's done me in. Today, she became the first woman to be jailed for life under truth in sentencing laws, ensuring she'll die behind bars. She's been branded a danger to the community, capable of murdering anyone who crosses her. Yeah, every dog has his day, all right. Every dog has his day. When Jap cops arrived at the apartment of Takahiro Shiraishi, because the neighbors complained of a smell, I guess they were expecting to find someone cooking up one of those stinky fish and noodle dishes that they all like so much, and then offer them up a bowl. But what they found were what the press would later call the killing floor. With nine severed heads, all neatly packed in coolers full of kitty litter. I guess to keep them all fresh. The killer had met all nine of his victims online. Apparently, they all wanted to end it, and he offered to help them out. What a swell guy. So he drugged them, fucked them, and cut them up while they were still alive. Oh yeah, and he ate them. And apparently, all of them, eight girls and one guy. I guess he's gotta mix things up. And he told the court they died a painless death. <laughs> That's easy for him to say. He told police that he only had one regret. And that is he didn't cough up the money to get the extra deodorized litter. Yeah, but you know the deodorized litter, it does cost a lot of money. And if you got a budget, you're best to stick to it. I guess no one was really that surprised when they found out that Ted Bundy liked eating pussy for real. When forensics had noted that they'd found several of the girls' sex organs chewed out then puked up a short distance from the crime, covered in stomach bile. But I guess it all comes down to the seasoning. Because the man who killed a girl a month, and cops identified his victims as the girl of the month club, had a voracious appetite in every way. And when asked by forensic psychologists to explain his dietary supplementations and why he decided to eat something that he just jizzed in, he said he had no answer. Like an addiction, you keep craving something which is harder, harder, something which which gives you a greater uh, sense of, of, of excitement. Finger licking good, eh, Ted? You know, no one ever questioned Jeffrey Dahmer's credibility as a necrophiliac, ass-fucking serial killer extraordinaire. But what a lot of people overlook, that he were pretty handy in the kitchen as well. Cause he could cook himself up a mean black man. But with the final victims list tallying up at 17, only his toilet bowl knows how many of them he ate. But with a detailed meal plan found in his apartment, and a good supply of seasoned body parts in his fridge, including the head and several cocks, police knew this sick prick had more on his mind than just a quiet night in with his youngest piece of meat being a tender 14. Experts say that being a serial killer is about domination, and eating a victim is the ultimate domination. Known as the Jap with the big appetite, although I prefer Oriental, it's a little less offensive. S.A. Sagawa may not have officially raked up some high numbers, only credited with a single kill, but he certainly put a glamorous face on cannibalism in Japan where he became known as the Cannibal Superstar. While as an exchange student in the early 80s in Paris, he met a pretty young Dutch girl and decided to eat her ass, literally. When caught with her body parts in a suitcase, Sagawa had no problem telling the frog police that he had invited the 21-year-old Renee Hartfeld over to study and for a snack. But he never mentioned that she'd be the snack. He told cops that he snuck up behind her with a rifle while she was reading French poetry to him out loud. He pressed it to her head and pulled the trigger. But it slipped and he hit her neck. I hate when that happens. And as she cried why and fell to the floor, he got busy with her quivering body as she slipped into the abyss. He then continued saying he'd always admired Renee's ass, so he decided to eat it right there. Enough with the cheesy pickup lines. But he said it didn't taste good, so he cooked it and seasoned it. It tastes worse. <laughs> 
No fuck. He then went on to tell the police he chose her for her health and beauty. Qualities that the four foot Lothario figured he never had. Yeah, it's hard to have health and beauty when you're a man and you're four foot nine. But after the frogs arrested him, he was at risk of becoming a tourist attraction. And I guess not wanting people to forget about the Eiffel Tower, they extradited his pint-sized ass back to Japan. But because of a mix-up of paperwork, when he landed in Japland, they set him free. And he became an adored superstar. I guess the proof is in the pudding, and the pudding was in his pants. Now next up is the gangster rapper, Big Lurch. And with only one victim, yeah sure, he ain't that impressive. But I put him in the mix because I'm all for affirmative action. And for a gangster rapper, Big Lurch certainly brought some originality to what some may say is an already stale genre. Instead of rapping about his bitches and money, he got straight to the nitty gritty, rapping about PCP and the positive things that it brought to his life. But critics questioned what those positive aspects were when cops arrested Big Lurch standing naked in the middle of Hollywood Boulevard covered in blood, staring at the sky. And when they went back to his apartment, his girlfriend was dead and he'd used her chest cavity as a bowl of cereal, finishing off on her face. And when he pleaded temporary insanity due to drugs, Cali cops weren't buying it and they gave him a life sentence. I guess he's now got a lot of time on his hands to plan his next record. Hey Tupac, learn to play an instrument. And number one on that bug's top cannibal list is Elba Fish, the baddest motherfucker that ever was is. Did you see what I did there? I was rapping. Cause in his crimes, he showed no discrepancy. Retards, kids. As long as they were ass pussy, he was down on it. And that little shack in the woods, that was his love shack where he got balls deep. As an example of Fish's brutality, one of his victims was a retarded guy. And he tied him up and started eating him. And after he finished part of his torso, he just left him there bleeding out. Stuck five dollars in his mouth, kissed him goodbye, and left him there to die. That's ice cold. Even Dharma didn't lay pipe in a retard. And with only three deaths to his name, most historians believe it was more. A man that had a passion for eating raw meat, it were inevitable that it would evolve into cannibalism. I guess Fish never read the Bible, because if he did, he would have read Blessed Are the Children. And for that alone, he gets my vote for dead bug sick fuck cannibal killer number one. And if you figure there's someone worse, let me know in the comments. Legion forever! <laughs>